Hey guys, I got another pressing project in the works and wanted to share a couple of books with you that I'm going to be working on for a grade bump. So cracking, cleaning, pressing, and resubmitting these books to, to CGC. So I wanted to start off, I'm probably going to be focusing more in this, uh, in this video on this Marvel Spotlight 2. Uh, but we'll get to the Marvel Spotlight 6. So we've got a couple in the in the same series that I wanted to share. So let's take a look at this one first. Now, you guys know that I love PGX books for the ability to, to crack and press them. So, you know, I, I haven't really thoroughly looked at what the accuracy of this grade right here is, but I can know that it's it's going to be plus or minus either 0.5 or, or 1 on, on these. But the the premium that CGC books get means that the PGX and CBCS are going to be discounted for the same grade. So if I were to have got this book in a CGC 8.0, it would have been at least 20 to 25% more than this PGX book. And so I'll tell you why I picked this one. We'll, we'll take a look at it real quick and I'll walk through why it caught my eye when I was searching for it. So I've been trying to pick up some of these Marvel Spotlight books, Ghost Rider, uh, is a is one of my favorite characters pretty cool so I wanted to pick I saw this one the colors look good and I thought it'd be a perfect candidate so let's take a look at what I saw in in uh, the the pictures of the auction so the first thing was is that it has this uh, distribution ink around the top uh, that can be cleaned up uh, quite a bit uh, it also if you look over here has some bends that I can fix uh, through pressing as well so that caught my eye. It also has a large uh, bend that's probably caused by uh, stacking curl. So it's probably just the way it was stored without a bag and board with a bunch of other books. Uh, so it has a nice bend right there. Again, that's something that can be removed through pressing. So I figured um, if those are the major things holding it back, you know, this basically this overspray right here of the distribution ink and these uh, bends on the, the back cover this uh, this corner right here, and let's see if there was anything on the on the front. I think there's a bend with a, a color breaking stress line right there, but I can fix the bend and, and mitigate that line. And the rest of it looks really clean. So this is a perfect candidate for a crack and press and, and resubmission. Uh, it, it will clean up quite a bit on the back and we'll be able to fix a lot of those defects with pressing. So again, you know, this is a book that you can get at a discount for the same grade in CGC. And I think this one's a, a perfect candidate for one of these projects. Now let's move over to the Marvel Spotlight 2. So there, this is kind of a combination spec book and a book that I really wanted in my collection. I mean, I, I definitely love Neil Adams' art. This is uh, one of his kind of classic covers. Uh, I wish I had this in time for the CGC signing because it would have been uh, a nice addition to get to get in there. So I'll, I'll show you again what caught my eye when I saw this, and I actually purchased the Grader Notes for this. So that's one of the things. If they, it's a CBS uh, book, I'll pull the Grader Notes, which are free. And if it's CGC and I'm spending this kind of money, I'm definitely going to spend the five dollars or so to get the Grader Notes for it to figure out exactly what's uh, what's wrong with it. So I'll show you the major things. We're going to look at distribution ink overspray again. So the, this is uh, pretty excessive. They don't dock you too much, but when you get a lot of overspray like that, it will ding your grade quite a bit. So we have this uh, in there. I think we also have a little bit of a bend. There's also uh, some uh, color rub or color transfer from another book right here and here that we can clean up. And then the two biggest things are this bend and corner crunch. So you can see right here, we have uh, a bend in the corner. And the same, you can see it transferred onto the other side as well. So it goes straight through. There's, uh, there's the bend on the other side. So that's something that I could, I could definitely fix with a, with a good press. The rest of the cover, like there's this uh, color breaking crease right here in the, in the bottom left or bottom right. So I'm not gonna be able to fix that. Uh, there's a little bit of a bend in the top right corner right here. Let's see if I can get to catch the light just right. There we go. I think we can get it right there. So we've got this bend right there that I can fix a, a little bit. And then for the rest of it, you know, it's got it's got a little bit of something going on over here. I'll see more what that is when I crack this out. And uh, I'll, I'll take a look at the spine and see how much I can do. But 
you know, there's some there's some areas over here that are going to impact the grade, but I'm definitely going to be able to move this from a 6L. Now, I think this is going to be the, the focus of this video because one of the things that I've been practicing is my techniques with square bound books. So that's basically what, what this is right here. Uh, and I'm going to go real quick and, and grab another square bound book to show you guys exactly what I'm going to be uh, working on. Okay, so let's look at one, a $2 book that I got uh, from the local comic store to practice on before moving into, into something big so we can talk about this. So what is the square bound book? Well, square bound books, uh, just as you imagine, there's no staple, right, on the outside. They're stapled internally and they have adhesive that adheres the outside layer to the comic. Now, if you press this without supporting this, uh, this, uh, uh, spine right here, you're going to end up flattening that book. So you'll see a lot of books that are like that, that are just pretty much, if you can look at it this way and see the, see the label, that means that it's been flattened out, right? And you don't want that to happen. So the way that we protect the book during the pressing process is using something like this. So these are one, these are uh, magazine backer boards cut into one inch strips. And when we put this in the press, we're going to line up, uh, stack these the height of the, the height of the spine, and that's going to protect the spine from getting crushed. All right. So we're going to go, and you can kind of feel to the height of uh, where that spine is. So you'll still get a good press on the cover, but your spine is going to be pr protected from being crushed by these uh, little one-inch strips. The other thing that you have to be careful of, we'll open this up and you can see the interior. So you'll see how this is stapled, right? You have the interior pages that are stapled. We can look at the back cover and you see the end of the staples right there, all right? So we don't, we have to be cautious of two things. One, we have to do this low, lower temperature so that we don't end up melting the cover off the book. And we also have to protect these staples a little bit. So you can put, instead of cardstock, and we're gonna work on this stack when I crack out the Marble Spotlight too, but we'll, we'll put printer paper in, in here on this back cover, probably three inches deep, and then we'll put uh, the same thing on, on this side. All right, so we'll put something to protect over here so you don't get staple push through your cover, all right? And then we'll put one a couple sheets back to, to give it some additional support. But this is one of the ones you're not going to put. Uh, the base, they basically, the big difference is you don't put a magazine backer board in the center of the book. All right. But we'll work on that stack in a little bit. So I'm going to crack uh, both these guys out. Uh, as you know, you've seen that process before with the P, uh, PJX books. It's uh, easy peasy, but we're going to come back to this werewolf by night. And we're going to see the whole process of, uh, of cleaning this guy up, getting him ready to uh, get, get uh, pressed and cleaned. Okay, now I've busted both these guys out of their slabs. And at this point, I'm even more happy that uh, I made this decision. I'm gonna show you some of the books that we can see more closely. Let's look at the Marble Spotlight Ghost Rider first. So I'll just put this guy aside right now and uh, let's take a look. So if we uh, look in the light, see a lot of, let's see if I can catch the, the angle right there. So you can see there's a lot, there we go, right there. So we can fix those bends right there with a good press. The rest of the cover looks pretty good. There's some right there. So that, that again is what we saw in the case. So we should be able to fix this, uh, this bend right there in the, in the case, uh, with the press and gently flip it over and take a look at the back. And that's the same bend we saw from the front now. We can see it on the back and this, uh, this corner right here too, that whole side. 
So we'll be able to clean this up significantly with our cleaning process. I'm gonna actually use my kit that I sell on eBay uh, to do that. And so you can see all the pieces that go into that. So we'll be able to clean up some of that overspray and then we're going to press out uh, all of these defects right now. So we'll see how they go, but uh, humidity, a uh, uh, little spa time in the humidity tank followed by a press should, uh, should handle that one nicely. Let's, uh, one thing I forgot to look, I forgot, there we go. Make sure we take out this mitt paper from uh, inside so that uh, that protects the, the book while it's in the case. CGC puts that in there as well. And I haven't taken that out there out yet. So there we go. Let's take that out before we uh, start pressing anything. Okay. So there's the Marvel Spotlight 6 and let's take a look at uh, Marvel Spotlight number two. So this is going to be the trickier one, as I mentioned, because it is a square bound book. So we're going to have to deal with that. But again, really happy with the decision because look at all that stuff we can fix with, uh, with the press right there. But fix that corner, fix uh, that, those little bends right there. We're going to figure out what exactly this is. I'm not exactly sure. And then uh, we're going to be able to fix. Looks like there's a little indentation right there. We'll fix that uh, with maybe some hot shots uh, treatment with the tack iron to get that out. And we'll take a look at, uh, at the back. Same thing, we'll be able to deal with uh, that, that bend in that corner crunch right there. Be able to clean up this back cover significantly, get rid of some of that overspray, get rid of these uh, marks from the color transfer on the staples and uh, make this thing look really good for uh, resubmission. So I'm, I'm hoping at least a grade level bump on this. I might, I might be able to get it up to uh, a seven, which would be awesome on this uh, by addressing those issues. So let's see if we have, there we go, our microfiber paper right there. Make sure there's none on the, on the inside. But the other things with, uh, with this book is, it, it looks really good, like the spine it, it, you know, aside from what's happening over here in this corner, the spine looks really good. And that, that's the most important part with this is we want to preserve that with our one inch strips. I'll show you how we're going to build the stacks for that. But uh, the next step is going to be cleaning both of these books. And we'll see how well we can do at getting up that that uh, that overspray on the back cover. So we'll uh, we'll be back with uh, with that process.
Okay, so I'm about to load this in. I have my stack of one inch strips right there to protect the spine. I have a single copy paper sheet under the front cover, another sheet three pages back, one under the back cover, and then one three pages back from the back cover. You don't really wanna put uh, any kind of cardstock under there because it's gonna uh, hurt, the, you might uh, risk splitting the spine. And so for this book, I think it's gonna be a challenge to try to get that out or as mitigated as possible while protecting it. Also, you see that spot that was uh, some staple push through the cover. I pushed the staples down a little bit and then I'm hoping that the sheet that I put there will protect it and maybe by pressing it will clean that up a little bit. So I'm now going to finish this up by uh, putting another sheet of SRP paper on top, another magazine backer board, and then this is going to stay in here at 120 degrees for about 30 minutes or so. So with these square bound books, uh, low and slow, just like you're making a prime rib, right? So we are gonna keep this for less temperature and for a little longer. And then I will uh, go ahead and flip it tonight after about nine hours, and then we're gonna let it rest another uh, 12 or more after that. I'll probably check it uh, tomorrow to see how, how everything worked out. All right, let's see how it turns out. Okay guys, this is after uh, two rounds of pressing front and back on the Marble Spotlight number two. And we're gonna take a look at our uh, final product over here. And I think I'm gonna stop at this point uh, in, in terms of working on this book just because I don't wanna push it with, uh, with the spine. So if you remember some of the defects uh, was the major corner crunch over here. We'll take a look at that. A little zoomed in. See, that's significantly improved. You still see the color breaks from where the damage was, but the corners no longer crumbled like that. There's also a little bit of writing in that top corner, a little indentation of the writing. That has faded out a lot as well. Uh, that was something I pointed out in, uh, in the video where I was doing the using the tack iron. And overall, the, the cover looks a lot, a lot flatter. Let's take a look at the back. Okay, and the same thing, that corner, you'll still see a little bit of shadow right there, but I don't really wanna push it anymore with, uh, with that. I, I probably could maybe go for one more press, but I think like, because this is a square bound book, it's just harder to get that, uh, get that out. And then you still see some marks from the staples, which I don't think are gonna, are gonna come out. Uh, and I don't want to, again, push it very much further, but I think significant improvements overall, my first real go after a couple practice runs with a square bound book, tackling a hard problem with that corner crunch. So we'll see how this turns out uh, after submission and regrading. Thanks for uh, following me along with this journey.